Hi, welcome to my channel. I'm Lisa. This is Ivy Lane Interiors and the project for today is this Heppelwhite. I love this style. It's very traditional, but usually there is beautiful mahogany underneath. I tried to release retain the wood on the top, but this one had a few repairs that needed to be done and I decided to go with a little bit of a deeper moodier color. Here's my cool new ratcheting screwdriver that I've been loving lately. But the first thing I do is I always take off the hardware. I find that the easiest. That way I can just kind of kind of assess the piece and see if uh, what kind of repairs need to be done. So it's a good way to just kind of look the piece over as I'm taking off all of the hardware. As you can see here, I like to go ahead and put um, the screws back into the hardware. That way it just kind of keeps everything together and tidy. And then I'll go ahead and put this in a Ziploc bag and I'll label it. So that way I know, if I'm, especially if I'm working on several pieces at a time, I want to make sure I know exactly where my hardware is and that I don't get things lost. Cleaning the piece is really important to me, so I make sure I get some hot water and I dilute a degreaser into it, and then I use microfiber cloths, and I go in and I do the drawers, I do the entire piece inside out, and I just make sure I get a really good clean. I decided to go ahead and strip the top, so I'm using QCS by Stripwell. Um, stands for quick, clean, and safe, and I'm still perfect perfecting how to use QCS. So um, this was a really thick finish and so it kind of took the first layer off but it didn't do a great job on this. Um, I think I needed to let it set longer or maybe put some um, like a saran wrap or something over it but as you can see here I ended up going in um, with my carbide scraper and that really got the finish off. So um, it's a workout, but it is quick and effective as well. So it seems like the QCS in conjunction with the carbide scraper um, is a really good combination. You can use your carbide scraper even on the edges there. But once I got most of the finish off, then I was able to come in with my sander. I like to use my sander at the very last. And I usually actually go with a go with a higher grid. I usually start with maybe 120. And then as you can see on the edges, I'm a little heavy handed with my sander. And so I really like to do my edges with um, sandpaper, hand sanding, and I have all these really cool little sanding blocks and I've been able to get in on these little profiles and it just helps me not burn through any kind of veneer and it gives me a really good clean sand. After I'm done sanding, I like to clean with a 50-50 mixture of denatured alcohol and water. And it really helps just clean off any extra sanding dust and see if I've missed any areas and if I need to go back through. Because I've gone through all my grits. I've gone through 120, 150, 180. And it helps me know if I've missed any spots. As you can see here, I have just some little dents that I'm going to be sanding out. There's little things that you can just sand or if you maybe need to fill them. But sometimes it just gives a nice, a little bit more of a professional looking job when if you can sand something out or if you can fill something in before you paint it, it just makes it look that much better. So take those extra few minutes just to sand it out. As you can see here, there was some finish that was kind of globby. And so if I tried to just paint over that, you'd be able to see that underneath the paint. And so I'm going to give it a nice sanding, a little bit more than a scuff sand. So this is probably 
um, 120 grit, maybe even 150, but just it has enough grit to it to actually smooth that out. And then I'll go ahead and shoot it again with probably 180 just to make sure it's smooth and ready to go for my primer and then my paint. Now I'm going to go in and do some of my hand sanding. These are those cool little sanding profile blocks I got um, that you can just wrap it around some sandpaper and it helps you get into those little tight spots. And they have profiles that pretty much could match any type of furniture that you need. I'll link in description down below in the description box, but they have been super handy and they're not very expensive. And I don't know why I waited so long to grab them, but they are super helpful for all of the hand sanding bits. Here's just a few of the ones in the different profiles that they come with. You can see there's rounded ones, there's things that kind of come to a point. So again, they've been super helpful and you just wrap them around your um, sandpaper and you can get into any kind of profile on your wood. And there's even a flat one. I actually use this one quite a bit too. And they're flexible, so we're able to go around curves. You can see here I have a little bit of a rounded area and so it actually just gets right into that area and allows me to get a really good scuff sand before I prime. Now I'm using one of the pointed ones to get on top of this molding and um, again it just helps me get into those little crevices that would be difficult to do um, without some type of a tool. So there was a little bit of areas on a few of the drawers that had some nicks and some scuffs. So I'm going to use Bondo Glazing Putty. They're very shallow. And so this, this works really well for those shallow scratches and the shallow little nicks. And so you just apply it with some, um, with a putty knife and then let it dry. And then you come back and you sand it down and it really just smooths out all of those little imperfections. You can see all the glazing bondo I ended up having to put on this dresser. I know it looked really good in the first pictures, but there was a lot of scr scratches and dents in this and it definitely needed a lot of help. So um, the next part I'm going to do is I'm going to sand down all of the drawers. I like to go, because I'm going to paint this out, I want to try to sand down the top and the sides as close to raw as possible. Because I'm going to be putting primer and paint on this. So when you're doing that, you're adding extra width to that drawer. So the possibility of it sticking is greater. So my little pro tip is anytime you're painting um, drawers that actually go into a dresser, make sure that you sand down the top and the sides and that will help prevent any sticking once you've primed and painted the piece. Okay, now that I have the top 
completely sanded down. I'm not going to actually stain it yet. I like to wait until after I've painted the body, but I do need to protect it. So I'm using my hand masker from 3M and some brown craft paper, and I'm just masking off the entire thing because I don't want any kind of overspray to get on it when I actually go and spray paint it. Now it's time to prime. I always prime my pieces. Even if there's, I use a paint that says it doesn't need primer, I usually always prime. Um, you'll see in the next shot, this piece um, is mahogany and there was some um, bleed through. Um, it's called tannin bleed. And so the tannins in the wood are bleeding through even the primer. So you can see I'm putting another coat on and so that will block those tannins. Um, but because of that, I decided not to go with a light color. Um, even though I did two coats of primer, I just want to be on the safe side. So I decided to go ahead and go with a darker, moodier color. So I didn't have any problems with the tanning, tannins bleeding through. This is a little critter um, paint sprayer. I know everyone always asks me what I'm using. Um, it's not very professional, but you know what? Um, it works because uh, bin primer has to, shellac primer has to be cleaned with denatured alcohol or ammonia. So it's really hard to clean. And so this has very few moving parts and it's very easy to clean and it really gives a nice finish. I decided to go with one of my favorite greens. This is Salamander by Benjamin Moore. To clean my hardware, I have an old pot that I picked up at Goodwill. I boil some water, I add some vinegar, and then I put all of my hardware in there. I don't boil it in the house because my family hates the smell of boiling vinegar, so I just simply um, take it out to the garage and I set it on the floor and I just let it soak for a few days. And by doing that, it just kind of helps get the grime off. Then I come back with Barkeeper's Friend in a fine steel wool, and I use that to actually clean and polish up the hardware. Now these polished up pretty good, but I still went ahead and gave a um, fresh coat of gold on there. Now here you can see that I'm using a fine artist brush to get the actual edges. Now that the body's done, I'm going to move on to the top. Here I'm applying a wood conditioner just so that my stain goes on very smoothly. I'm mixing up a custom stain. I'm using General Finishes Antique Walnut and Brown Mahogany in a one-to-one -one ratio. I felt that the antique walnut was a little too brown, um, so I wanted to add that brown mahogany just to add a little bit of richness. And, well, wait till you see it. I think it is a beautiful combination. I'm just going to use a shop rag to apply it and then I wait a few moments and then I come back with a clean rag and I wipe off any excess. Then I did go ahead once it was dried and I applied three coats of a matte polyurethane. I decided to go ahead and line the drawers. I'm going to do a nice clean before I actually try to adhere the peel and stick wallpaper and then I'm just going to do a dry fit first. So I like to line up the um, straight edge along the back and then I'm actually going to end up trimming the other three sides. So I try to just get, get it, sometimes it sticks and so it's a little funny, but you just gotta make sure that you get it straight along the back. And then honestly, I like to use my hands 
to do the initial spreading out. So it seems like it's just a little bit more gentle. So you have to be really careful with some of these brands. They break really easily. So I'm using a Bondo spreader here. Um, be careful with those corners. I like to use um, my fingers to really just gently push it into the corners. Sometimes I have a little bit too much um, paper there so then I can just simply trim it just a little bit um, there in that corner because if you have too much paper you just can't get it a nice clean cut. So I'm using my Bondo spreader just to really try to get that paper into that crease there at the um, for the curve. Then as you can see I'm going to go through with my scissors and I'm just putting a little cut in it. So this is kind of like an old sewing hack. So to be able to go along the curve you're going to just cut that curve just a little bit and that will just kind of ease the paper so that it can go ahead and mold against the curve of the drawer. Now I'm going to switch and use my putty knife with my X-Acto knife and I'm going to use that to actually trim the piece along all three sides. You want to make sure your X-Acto knife blade is sharp. I try to uh, switch it out at least every, probably about every dresser just to make sure it's really sharp. As you can see I'm just using that metal blade to kind of go along and I just kind of scoop it up and then it allows me to really be able to get it. And if I miss a spot like right there then I use my X-Acto knife just kind of give it a nice little trim. I really try not hard not to pull it because if you pull it it usually tears. So you just have to be really careful with this paper. So now I'm going to cut the curve and I'm going to go over it one more time with my Bondo spreader just to make sure that it's really creased well. Then I will take my X-Acto knife and very carefully I'm going to go right there in that crevice and I'm going to trim it. and it came off in one piece, which is not typical. So that was really pretty beautiful. But there it is, all curved and beautifully lined. So let's look back to where we started. It was pretty scuffed up on top, uh, lots of little nicks and dings and scratches. Um, but after stripping the top, painting out the body in a nice dark moody color, here is the after. I think it turned out really good. That 50-50 mixture of the antique walnut with the brown mahogany on top is stunning. I love it. So tell me what you think and if you like these kinds of flips consider giving me a subscribe and tell me what you think in the comments. Thanks so much for watching.